So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the pendulum. So all a pendulum is, is an object that is attached by a string that will move left or right, swinging back and forth. The key variables that uh, we need to talk about here are the length of the string and, of course, the acceleration due to gravity. Um, in a spring, as we talked about in class, the period can be modeled by t equals 2 pi times root m over k. And we've done that in class. For a pendulum, there is no spring constant that we worry about. And we'll also, we're also going to find that the mass of the pendulum doesn't affect period. So for a pendulum only, t equals 2 pi times root L over G. And this is for the pendulum only. So we should always be able to calculate the period that a pendulum would take. So that would be the amount of time it takes for it to swing out and back and then towards equilibrium again, back to its starting position the amount of time. The exact same definition of period that we've been using for mass on a spring. So we have this handout called um, Pendulums and Spring Energy. So we're just going to have a really quick look at exactly what that would mean. So we have a 12 kilogram bob. Again, so it's 12 kilograms. It's attached to a 2.2 meter line. And we're going to assume that it's on Earth because it doesn't tell us differently. So we have G present. So we write T equals 2 pi times root L over G, T equals 2 pi times the root of 2.2 .2 meters over 9.81 meters per second squared, and we get T is equal to 2.98 seconds. We only have two significant figures, so we're going to call this 3 seconds. So that's all we have to do to calculate the period of a pendulum. In a variation of that, we can actually figure out the um, length of rope we would need to have um, a pendulum swing back and forth for a specific time, which would be useful if we were trying to design some sort of clock. So in this case, we want the period to be equal to one second. So what we're going to have a look at right now is we're just going to rearrange this equation. t equals 2 pi times root L over g, t equals root 4 pi squared. We're just going to bring this inside so we have to square everything. It's 4 pi squared times L times G. T squared is equal to 4 pi squared times L over G. We're just going to rearrange and solve for L. L equals T squared times G over 4 pi squared. So we're just going to substitute in 1 second squared times 9.81. Again, so we're going to assume it's on Earth all over 4 pi squared. 1 squared is easy times 9.81 divided by 4 pi. And we get 0 0.248. or 24.8 centimeters. So now we're going to try and apply this one more time. The period of a pendulum is 4.84 seconds. It has a length of the chain of 2.2 meters on Mars. So what is the acceleration of gravity on Mars? So I'm just going to start with this equation from question two, and I'm just going to re rearrange and solve for little g. L 4 pi squared over t squared. We're just going to plug in our variables. We have t, we have length. So 2.2 .2 meters, 4 pi squared over 4.84 seconds equals 3.71 meters per second squared, which we can look up and find out that that is, in fact, the accurate amount of time it would take for uh, sort of the accurate acceleration due to gravity on Mars. So 
Now that we've talked about pendulums, we have another topic to look at. And basically, we have two particular um, concepts that we're just going to borrow from what we've done in uh, physics 11, is we have potential energy, which I use the symbol U. And on Earth, um, we talk about potential energy is equal to mgh. And then we have kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. So as we remember, potential energy is the energy stored in an object as it's held up. And then as it's released, it will um, convert to kinetic energy. And then basically, the reason that that energy is converted from potential to kinetic is because there is a sprint, there is a... Um, a force pulling down just like there is in the spring here so as we pull this mass to the right um, we are building up potential energy storing that energy in the spring much like we have gravitational potential um, energy which is what we are used to using when we let it go the potential energy will start to convert into kinetic energy and all the potential energy will be used up by the time it gets back to x equals zero so remember we have x equals a and x equals negative a. So as the mass goes out and back, we will actually see kinetic energy and potential energy switching spots. Two key ideas is at the amplitude, all of the energy is stored in potential. There is no velocity. So, it, so the total energy is equal to potential energy. At the center, there is no uh, stretch or push on the spring. The spring is continuing to move because of its uh, momentum. So at this point, the total energy of the system is 100% just equal to the kinetic. And everything in between is a combination. So we write energy total is equal to U plus K. And that's exactly what we had last year. But here is a little difference is we are not dealing with gravity in this case. We're talking about a spring. So we actually will write U on a spring is equal to one half the spring constant times the position squared. So U equals one half KX squared, where X is the position um, on this line. So for example, 1, 2, 3, if x was equal to 3, we would plug in 3, square it, multiply it by the k, of course, which we hopefully have. And basically, at these positions, we can actually make some pretty simple calculations. So et is equal to potential energy, 1 half kx squared, plus kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. We also know that energy total is equal to one half k a squared and basically all this is is that the energy total is equal to um, the energy when the mass is over here at amplitude we can also say that at this at the center where there is no potential energy and it's all um, kinetic energy we can say that the total energy is equal to one half um, m v max squared so these are all situations that we can use to um, help us solve problems. If we know the position of the amplitude and we know the spring constant, we can calculate total energy. So if we know total energy, if we already know this variable, then we should be able to calculate V max, assuming we know what the mass is. So we're going to give that a try on the, um, the same sheet that we've been using called pendulums and spring energy, which we were talking about in pendulums. And we're just going to slide down to number four. So it says a spring is pulled back. A spring is pulled back uh, six centimeters. So I got six centimeters here um, from its equilibrium. It has 20 newtons per meter of a spring force constant. If the mass weighs 0 0.200 kilograms, we're just going to convert it to kilograms right now. Um, what is the maximum speed that it will reach? So. We're going to, of course, we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to use some of the stuff that we just did. In this particular expression, um, we have amplitude. It's telling us the six centimeters. We have K, so we're going to calculate ET with this. We're going to use this first. So ET is equal to one half K, sorry, A squared, 
a squared et is equal to one half uh, 20 newton meters times the antipode, 0 0.06 meters squared. E total is equal to 0, decimal 0, 3, 6, and we have energy, so it's in the joule. So when we push this spring in, it we're going to store 0, decimal 0, 3, 6 joules of potential energy in that spring. When we let it go, it's going to con start converting to kinetic. And when it reaches x equals 0, from what we've talked about in class, we should see that at x equals 0, we're at maximum velocity anyway. So at this point, we can use uh, the energy conservation to help us. So we're going to write at this point, et is equal to k at x equals 0. That's always going to be true. So ET is equal to 1 half mv max squared. And what we're going to do is we're just going to solve for v max here. Is two times 2 ET divide it by mass and take the root of it. Mass is 0 0.200 kilograms. Take the root. V is equal to 0, decimal 60 meters per second. I have three significant figures, but I only have two. So using conservation of energy, just like we did in grade 11, we can solve for. Um, particular of maximum velocities. Now for number five we have a situation very similar to what we're just talking about. It's actually the same system. We have ET is equal to one-half kx squared plus one-half mv squared. Total energy is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. We already have um, total energy. It's, it's in the question above. That's not going to change. Nothing's changing in this. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in everything we have. So the total energy is 0 0.036 joules equals 1 half 20 newton meters. Um, we don't know what x is at this point. That's what we're going to solve, hopefully. Plus 1 half 0 0.200 kilograms times 0 0.40 meters per second squared. Now that's not um, V max. If you were to do something on a question like this and you saw that your V in like the subsequent question is greater than what your V max calculation was, you've probably do something wrong either in the previous question or the current question. So we have all of this information, so let's just solve that. 0 decimal 0, 3, 6 joules equals um, 1 half of 20. Let's see if we can just do that. is 0 decimal 0, 1, 6 joules. Now we just, we have x basically is the only variable that's left, so we're just going to solve it. And when we solve it, we get x equals 0 decimal 0, 4, 4, 7 meters. Um, I don't necessarily like my answer in meters, so I'm going to multiply it by 100 centimeters per meter get rid of meters, 4.47 centimeters. I still only have two significant figures, so 4.5 centimeters. So I'm just going to check the maximum amplitude was 6 centimeters, so the fact that this is 4.5 centimeters and not at maximum velocity, that all makes sense. So that is essentially how uh, potential energy and spring energy works. Also, that's how um, the period of a pendulum kind of factors in. Thank you very much.